Think Subaru's CVT is just another transmission? Ask the owners who had theirs fail at 65,000 miles, right after the warranty expired, and got hit with a $6,000 repair bill. This isn't rare, and in 2025, you need to know if the Subaru you are planning to buy could be next. Subaru has become one of the biggest names in all-wheel drive, safety, and outdoor adventure. But there's one part of their vehicles that sparks heated debate, the CVT transmission. While it's designed to improve fuel efficiency and deliver smooth power, many Subaru owners have experienced shuddering, slipping, whining noises, and even complete transmission failure. Whether you're shopping for a used Subaru or considering a brand new one in 2025, you need to know the real story behind Subaru's CVTs. In this video, we're breaking down how Subaru's CVT works, which models and years are most affected, the most common failure symptoms, how much it costs to fix, and whether Subaru has finally solved these issues in their newer vehicles. Stick around this could save you thousands of dollars and a ton of frustration. What is a CVT transmission and why does Subaru use it? A CVT, continuously variable transmission, is different from a traditional automatic. Instead of using fixed gears, a CVT relies on pulleys and a steel belt to provide a seamless range of gear ratios. The result? Smoother acceleration and better fuel economy. Subaru started using CVTs around 2010, first in the Legacy and Outback, and later expanded it to nearly all models, including the Forester, Impreza, Crosstrek, Ascent, and even the WRX. The goal was to reduce emissions, increase MPG, and keep the engine in its optimal power band. But while the theory is sound, the execution hasn't always gone smoothly especially in earlier models. Common Subaru CVT Problems What goes wrong? While not every CVT-equipped Subaru is a ticking time bomb, many owners have reported serious issues, particularly between 2010 and 2016. Here are the most common problems. Shuddering or jerking at low speeds. A major red flag. Many owners report a hesitation or vibration when accelerating from a stop often caused by valve body wear or internal belt slippage. Whining or groaning noises. A high-pitched whine that increases with engine speed usually signals a failing pump bearing or pulley inside the CVT. Delayed engagement into drive or reverse. If it takes a few seconds for the car to move after shifting, that could mean low fluid pressure or an issue with the torque converter. Transmission overheating. Especially in models like the Subaru Ascent, which is heavier, owners have reported overheating CVTs under load sometimes triggering a warning light or limp mode. Complete CVT failure. In worst-case scenarios, the internal belt fails or the valve body becomes so damaged that the entire transmission needs to be replaced, a repair that often costs $4,000 to $7,000 and isn't always covered by warranty. One 2015 Forester owner described it as driving on ice with no throttle response before the transmission quit entirely. On forums, you'll see dozens of posts where failure came with no warning, just a sudden loss of drive in traffic. Worst years for Subaru CVT failures. Based on reports from real owners, mechanic data, and extended warranty claims, the highest risk years for CVT problems are 2010 to 2014 Outback and Legacy. First-generation Lineartronic CVTs were under-tested and suffered from early wear, shuddering and failure before 100,000 miles. 2014 to 2016 Forester. Common complaints of jerking, slow response, and loud whining noises. Subaru issued a few TSBs and extended some warranties. 2013 to 2015 Crosstrek and Impreza. These models had frequent valve body issues and torque converter failure around 80,000 to 100,000 miles. 2019 Ascent. Subaru's first three-row SUV pushed the CVT to its limits. Many early Ascents suffered from overheating and full transmission replacement under warranty. While Subaru issued technical service bulletins, TSBs, and extended warranties for some of these years, many owners still had to fight for coverage or pay out of pocket once warranties expired. Though Subaru has improved these transmissions, some of the fixes aren't as permanent as you'd think, and missing one cheap maintenance step can send even a newer CVT to an early grave. Has Subaru fixed the CVT problems in 2025? Yes to some extent. Subaru has made significant improvements to its CVT units since 2017. They've upgraded the belt materials, redesigned the torque converters, and refined the valve body controls. Newer models from 2018 onward are generally much more reliable, with far fewer complaints and failure reports. By 2025, models like the Outback, Forester, and Crosstrek have well-refined CVT units, 
and failure rates are lower than they were a decade ago. However, that doesn't mean they're bulletproof. These transmissions still require careful maintenance and attention to fluid condition. They're also more expensive to repair if anything goes wrong, because most CVTs can't be rebuilt easily, replacement is the typical fix. While Subaru CVTs today are better, they're still not as long-lasting as traditional automatics or even Honda's newer CVTs. So, don't relax just yet, because even the improved CVTs have one thing in common with the older ones. If you follow Subaru's so-called lifetime fluid advice, you might be cutting your transmission's life in half. We have a video here where we debunked those lifetime transmission fluid BS. CVT maintenance, what you need to do, but dealers might not tell you. One of the most common myths is that Subaru CVT is lifetime fill, meaning it doesn't need fluid changes. That's false. If you want your Subaru CVT to last beyond 100,000 miles, regular fluid changes are essential. Here's what you need to know. Change the CVT fluid every 30,000 to 50,000 miles. Especially if you do a lot of city driving, towing, or mountain driving. Use only Subaru CVT fluid, high torque CVT FLV. Aftermarket fluids can damage the internal belt. Flush or drain. A full flush is ideal, but must be done properly with the right equipment. A drain and fill is safer if you're doing it dry. Watch for fluid leaks near the transmission pan or cooling lines. Even a small leak can drop pressure and cause shifting problems. Many dealerships skip CVT fluid changes unless you ask, so if you're buying a used Subaru, ask for maintenance records, and budget for a fluid service if it hasn't been done. In fact, some Subaru service departments quietly admit they only change CVT fluid if the customer insists, even when they know it's due. That means if you buy used, assume it's never been done unless you have the receipt in your hand. How to spot CVT problems when buying used? If you're test driving a used Subaru, here are some simple checks you can do. From a stop, feel for hesitation or jerking. It should move off smoothly without any shudder or delay. Listen for high-pitched whining as you accelerate that's not normal. Let the car coast, then accelerate again. Any delay or sluggishness could mean internal wear. Check the transmission fluid if possible it should be clean, pinkish red, and not smell burnt. Scan for transmission codes with a basic OBD2 scanner. Even if the check engine light isn't on, transmission errors can be stored in the memory. If you're buying from a private seller, always ask. Has the CVT fluid ever been changed? Have you ever had the transmission serviced or replaced? If the answers are vague, it's a red flag. What you need to know before you buy. Subaru's CVT transmission isn't a total deal breaker, but it is a critical point of research if you're shopping in 2025. Early models had serious flaws that could cost thousands to fix. The newer units are better, but they still require proper maintenance and careful driving to stay healthy long term. So, should you buy a Subaru with a CVT in 2025? Yes, but only if you do your homework. Look for newer models, ask for service history, and don't skip the fluid changes. If you take care of it, a Subaru CVT can easily last 150,000 to 200,000 miles, but if you ignore the signs, you might be shopping for a new transmission sooner than you'd like. If you found this helpful, you'll definitely want to watch our other video on the 5 worst Subaru models to avoid in 2025. The video goes deep into which years and models have the most expensive hidden problems, and I'll link it down in the description for you. If this video helped, hit the like button, drop your experiences in the comments, and subscribe for more real-world car advice, DIY guides, and buyer tips. And if you're looking for the best Subaru models to buy or the worst ones to avoid, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.